I've said it before and I'll say it again. Horror movies often have problems wrapping up their stories. It's an occupational hazard. If you want to be scary, it's, it's tough to make everything end in a cohesive and compelling way. I don't make the rules, I just follow them. Ambiguity and hastiness reign supreme in the bad horror ending, whether that means the killer disappears without a trace or everybody dies and closure disappears like a father out just to give milk. Maybe it'll just end on some text explaining what happens next instead of actually showing the audience, who knows? Hello, horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we are going to be counting down the top five scary horror movies ruined by their endings, part two. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more poorly planned plots. Just like last time, I will remind you that we will be discussing the endings of popular movies here, so spoilers abound. You've been warned. All right, let's get going. Floating in at number five, we've got It, chapter two. Yeah, I'm gonna stroke some controversy right off the bat. I'm ready for everything this entails. Stephen King's It has historically had a problem with his live-action renditions finishing strong. This may or may not have to do with the fact that the book is over a thousand pages long, contains a titular monster that's hard to define, and also involves some questionable content concerning kids combating clowns with coitus. Proud of that last sentence. The 90s miniseries ended with a giant spider battle, which was loved by connoisseurs of Harryhausen's style stop-motion and met with confusion by everyone else. They did their best to remedy that flat final showdown in the two-part modern remake, but still weren't able to totally shake off the cobwebs. Yeah, let's all work together and make fun of this clown until he turns into a baby and then we can reach in and take his heart, I guess. Go team! After a whole lot of build-up and a lot of arguably much scarier iterations of it throughout the movie, the ultimate battle feels a lot less than, well, ultimate. I'm gonna take it a step further too and say that they biffed the entire second movie. Okay? It Chapter 1 started super strong. It delivered a whole bunch of wicked scares as well as a cast of lovable scamps to cheer on the whole time. The younger actors did such a good job at being likable that the studio decided it was totally necessary to add individual flashback sequences of events not shown in the first movie to pad the runtime and bring the kids back in Chapter 2. This gave the movie a bit of whiplash, jumping back and forth in time without really ever explaining why. You know, oh, we gotta split up and relive something scary before we fight this thing. No way to avoid it, sorry. A lot of these encounters end up being complete tonal shifts and don't add much to the plot. It ends up being a convoluted, overly long mess. So yeah, chapter one, fantastic. Chapter two, a gigantic missed opportunity. The ending was meh, and chapter two itself was an ending that squashed the potential that chapter one set up. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk on why IT Chapter 1 is better than IT Chapter 2. Coming in at number 4, Lights Out. I should have stayed, it's just a short film. I remember watching the original 3-ish minute flick and being scared absolutely silly. It was so simple and so effective. A woman alone in her apartment and a demon that only shows up when the lights are out. Using some split-screen editing, the filmmakers cost-effectively painted a terrifying and dream-haunting picture. And then it went viral, attracted a bunch of agents, and ended up being produced by James Wan. Wan knows his stuff, but I think he let this one go a little too loosey-goosey. A backstory for the lights out lady was invented, and a bunch of excuses for people to run into the demon were shoehorned in. They recreate the short within the first scene, which is cool on a bigger budget, but then they just keep it going afterwards. The whole movie feels like an excuse to show Diana some more. I'll go so far as to say the entire movie past the first scene is the ending that ruined it. Maybe that's a little harsh because they do come up with some more cool ideas, like the flash from firing a gun making her disappear and avoid the bullets, but most of it seems pretty phoned in. Especially the origin story. Like a girl with a skin disorder who's put under lights that were just too bright and they killed her and turned him into a demon. Like, come on, that's some super villain origin story, super schlocky stuff right there. All this culminates in and somebody realizing, oh, I guess I'm the reason why she's here, and then sacrificing themselves, making for a particularly cop outy ending. There was a sequel planned at some point, but I'm sure they just couldn't come up with enough convincing rationale for Diana to come back. Finding its way in at number three, we've got Lost Souls, a good old-fashioned Antichrist movie. Usually the big bad makes an appearance and often even wins in tales like this, but not in Lost Souls. In fact, we never even get to see the main antagonist itself. Lost Souls does have a lot going for it though. It is absolutely gorgeous and stunningly shot. And Winona Ryder is our main character, which is always a plus. As Maya, a Catholic school teacher moonlighting as a demon hunter of sorts, she is tasked with preventing the return of the Antichrist. It comes to her attention that Peter Kelson, an author of some renown, has likely been chosen to be the host. Peter has no idea that this is happening and initially assumes that she's a nutbar. Some paranormal happenings quickly convince him otherwise. After a multitude of Satan-related ordeals, it's confirmed that Peter is indeed scheduled to become the devil spawn, so Maya does what has to be done. She pops a goddamn cap in his dome. And he doesn't transform. And then the movie ends. 
There's a lot of ambiguity as to what really happened. Was Maya delusional? Maybe hallucinating? Some folks, including the director Janice Kaminsky, says this is an excellent way to get the audience thinking. Others would probably say that it's an excellent way to make the audience feel like they've been left without a proper conclusion. Driving its way into number two, The House's October Built. This, in all honesty, is a pretty fun found footage horror flick. The ending, though, is mostly flat. We follow a bunch of folks who have resolved to check out these scariest haunted houses across America and record their experiences. This leads to the revelation that a bunch of haunted houses are involved in some pretty shady business. Hiring criminals, employing dangerous stunts for scares, the works. It's kind of like a fictional McCamey Manor, but with less paperwork. A super hardcore haunted house group known as Blue Skeleton is name dropped, and the rest of the movie is the folks doing their best to find the elusive scaremongers. They spend the rest of the movie pissing off the actors in other haunted houses while claiming that the stuff they're seeing is nothing compared to Blue Skeleton. This leads to some haunted house employees following and antagonizing the protagonists. Animal hearts are snuck into fridges, people are filmed in their sleep, members are kidnapped, you name it. And then, they're buried alive. Yep, they found Blue Skeleton, but they just kidnapped them and put them underground to die. The end. After all the buildup, the tales told, the legends exchanged, the tension rising, we get a quick peek at the ultimate scarecrow, and then... It ends. It just feels like a big tease. There's no ultimate haunted house. There's no creative scare waiting around the corner. It's just abduction and then live burial. How interesting. And finally at number one, we've got Signs. Of course, we're gonna end with a Shyamalan twist. One of the most widely parodied ones too. Signs opens on a farm in the middle of nowhere. Mel Gibson plays a man at odds with God who has resigned himself to the simple task of caring for his family. His peaceful, somber routine is interrupted by crop circles which are initially thought to be made by vandals. This theory is thrown out the window once evidence of aliens all over Earth starts to show up. These tall, dark, extraterrestrial beings are everywhere, invading everything from birthday parties to basements, and they cause plenty of trouble too with their poison gas attacks. The man who caused Mel's crisis of faith seems to have discovered the secret weakness of the alien and then promptly skips Daddles. And guess what? These technologically superior, malicious, master planning aliens? They're allergic to water, the most abundant resource on Earth. And they decided that this was a good planet to invade. Should have thought that one through, eh? Signs is actually a really creepy movie until you realize this little detail. It has tension in spades and employs a whole bunch of wicked scares throughout. However, it definitely ends with a whimper, not a bang. The aliens, upon discovering that the blue planet is full of stuff that burns their flesh, just gotta hightail it out of there. Most of them anyways. Some get left behind in the confusion. The farmer fights an alien, asthma is perceived as an act of God, and everyone is happy once again. Cool. Really good stuff, folks. And there you have it. You know, sometimes the ending isn't that important, right? The journey that brought us there is the special part. Well, not every flick can be a masterpiece. What'd you think of the list? Which movie has the worst ending of all time? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more voracious ones from the top five dumbest horror movie moments. Dan says, There are so many. Five seems small. Must have been a hard list. Respect, Keegan. Great content. I mean, horror movies are absolutely stuffed with moments like these. It's hard to choose, sure, but they're not hard to find. Rob Gorman says, Would anyone agree that Leprechaun is the dumbest slasher movie? I mean, I would agree, but the dumbness is where all the fun comes from. And each sequel gets dumber too. I don't live the leprechaun. Ed Savant says, Jack Frost gave us such classy murders like the girl getting killed by a carrot pee pee. Looks like Christmas came early, eh? KD says, Tammy and the T-Rex, eh? I must watch this movie. Yes, you must. It's on Shudder right now. Go check it out. And Jonathan Davis says, make sure you have your pick of destiny before challenging the devil, or at least make sure to break his horn. My checklist for rock off against the devil includes a guitar, the pick of destiny, your best friend, and some butt moles. Am I missing anything? And that's all the time we have for today. Before I head out and have a spirited argument with Bugs Bunny, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more chilling recaps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.